Hello world, I'm flip-flopping yet again and I'm going to give the weak web videos another try. If you stuck with me for the past few months, you might remember I used to discuss many topics in one video for a kind of weekly roundup of cybersecurity news. Well, I wanted to give them another go because I see tons of juicy cybersecurity news topics pop up each week that are worth talking about but just won't stretch to fill a whole video. The single topic videos aren't going away of course, this reintroduction of the weak web is going to be on top of everything else. I'll give it a go for another few weeks, maybe we'll see, you know what I'm like. Hopefully the YouTube AI treats them well. Make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments and give me a bump by hitting like. I also have a fancy new weak web intro I wanted to run by you all. This video is really just one massive test. The first story kind of makes me cringe. A UK rail operator, West Midlands Trains, wanted to run a pen test on their 2,500 employees, so they sent an anonymous phishing email to all of their workers, pretending to be from the company in an effort to try and grab their employees' details. What's wrong with that, I hear you ask? A company being responsible and testing their employees' security practices? Surely this is nothing but good news. Well, the email in question thanked staff for their hard work during the pandemic and offered them all a one-off bonus to say thank you for working during lockdowns. The email told employees to click a link to register for their bonus all excited, many of them signed up, but all they received in return was an email telling them off and instructing them to make sure to remember not to open suspicious emails or click untrusted links. Obviously, people aren't too happy about this, and it's turning out to be a bit of a disaster for the train company. Unsurprisingly, the rail worker unions have been up in arms over the stunt. In fairness, this is a very accurate example of how phishing emails work. Scammers will promise you anything in order to grab your details. Though it's not hard to see why this would piss people off. What do you think? Is this acceptable or should the company be pressured into making true on their promises and actually handing out those bonuses? It looks like someone at the NSA watched my video on 5G vulnerabilities. Or maybe they just read the research paper. Hmm. I like to think they watched my video. Several US intelligence agencies have jointly published a paper warning of potential threats in the security of 5G. The paper discusses three main problems, 5G standards, supply chain issues, and problems introduced by systems architecture. To briefly summarize, the architecture issues refer to how much more complex 5G is than 3G and 4G. More components and more complexity usually translates into more security holes. Supply chain dilemmas come in the form of adversaries infiltrating the development of software or manufacturing of hardware that 5G runs on and installing backdoors. This is why Huawei supplying 5G equipment was such a big deal and why so many countries have rejected Huawei's hardware as they're deemed way too close to the Chinese government. The issue of 5G standards is that the design of the underlying technology may not be secure in of itself. Just go watch my previous video on Wi-Fi. I talk about how certain vulnerabilities in Wi-Fi went undetected for over 24 years. Not because of any malicious intent, just due to programming mistakes and bad design. When you get these issues in Wi-Fi, sure, it's not great, but it's not a massive problem in reality, as it's just not realistic for hackers to drive around and hack everyone's Wi-Fi networks. But given 5G will sometime soon envelop the world, critical vulnerabilities in it could have much worse consequences. Though it's not too shocking that the NSA published this paper. It is their job to provide analysis on technologies such as 5G. But watch this space. We haven't heard the last of 5G security issues. An unknown bad actor has managed to control more than a quarter of the Tor network's exit nodes. Exit nodes are the final servers that Tor traffic passes through before it reaches its final destination. Over the course of a year, an unknown party slowly added malicious nodes to Tor. At the peak, about a quarter of Tor exit nodes were under their control. Was this part of some FBI mission to rumble kitty fiddlers communicating on the dark web? It doesn't seem so. The full write-up will be linked below of course, though it would seem this was all done in an effort to target cryptocurrency transactions. The threat actor performed SSL stripping attacks on traffic to and from cryptocurrency websites. The researcher's best guess is that Bitcoin addresses were being rewritten whilst in transit in order to change the destination of cryptocurrency transfers. Bitcoin mixer services are quite common on the dark web. They aim to mix Bitcoin linked with crime with clean coins. Given all Bitcoin transactions are public, these services are really important for criminals in order to obscure their trail of crypto. It's theorized that these are the services which have been targeted by the bad actor in this case, though the compromised exit nodes have now been removed. Paying ransomware ransoms could become illegal in the UK at least. The UK government has launched a review into the Computer Misuse Act, which is the set of laws which handle pretty much all aspects of computer-related crime. The argument is that paying ransoms only encourages ransomware. If the act of paying ransoms was made illegal, then this could kill the concept of ransomware overnight, as there would simply be no money in it. And I'm kind of in two minds over this. Sure, if everyone did stop paying ransoms, then ransomware would be stopped in its tracks, by definition. However, that being said, I reckon this would 
only serve to decrease transparency from companies that have been hacked and held ransom. After all, if a hacked company desperately wants their data back and is willing to pay for it, then they will just pay for it and just not tell anyone about it. Thus, just driving this whole charade underground without actually fixing the problem at hand. Poor security practices. This is something I'm really interested to hear your guys' opinion on. Should paying ransoms be made illegal? And will this even fix the issue? My mind really isn't made up. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. The Apple vs Epic Games lawsuit has blown the lid on some dubious dealings by Apple. As reported by Wired, an email entered into court last week details how Apple handled the worst mass iOS compromise on record. In 2015, it came to light that 4,000 iOS apps had contained code that made iPhones and iPads part of a botnet. This was all due to legitimate developers developing apps using Xcode Ghost, a counterfeit copy of Xcode, which is the IDE used for making iOS apps. You see, Xcode used to be really slow to download via Apple's servers in China, so bad actors figured they just copied copy Xcode and modify it in such a way that it would poison any app made using it, and then just host it on better servers so it would be faster to download than the real version. Simple but genius when you think about it. Overall, 128 million people unknowingly downloaded these dodgy apps. Previously confidential Apple internal emails showed that Apple discussed notifying users that their iPhones were part of a botnet. I mean, it would have been nice of them. I don't think that's too much to ask but that it would have been rather technically challenging because Apple's mass emailing tool wasn't designed for such large email lists. There were a few emails back and forth about it, but by all accounts, they never actually ended up alerting users that their devices were literally part of a botnet. Disappointing at best, given Apple likes to make a big thing of privacy and security in its marketing material. However, however, there is some positive Apple news coming up next. Super bad news for Facebook, their reign as information overlord has taken yet another blow when it comes to mobile devices at least. A few months ago, Apple introduced a new tracking opt-in system, meaning Facebook and other apps that want to track your activity now have to ask your permission in order to do so. Google is reportedly considering something similar with Android. Well, the numbers are in, and as it turns out, barely 15% of iOS users are opting in to allow tracking by third-party apps. This is way worse for Facebook than they ever expected. The numbers look increasingly bad when it comes to US users in particular. Only 5% or so of American iOS users are cool with Facebook snooping their activity. And I know what you're thinking, 5%? That's 5% that's too much. But anyway, anyway, IMO, this is great news, and it sends a clear message to social media giants that public opinion on tracking has come a long way. Apple have preempted various ways app developers might try and game the system, such as offering incentives to users who allow tracking or disabling features for those who don't. These are all disallowed on the platform, and their use would mean an app's removal from the App Store. In other news, Maltronics is a website run by myself where you can find an array of super cool pen testing products. Our gear is used in over 100 countries and you can get 10% off with code Satonic. Trusted by hobbyists, pen testers and educational institutions, you can learn more over at Maltronics.com. If you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure to let me know in the comments and turn on those sub notifications so you don't miss any new hacking news. For behind the scenes footage, do make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.